Aha! Hi everyone, today's lecture is about forest plot. It is called forest plot because it produces a forest of lines. And what forest plot does, it basically summarizes data from different studies that are asking the same question. And an example for that in forest of plot would be seen in meta-analysis. What meta-analysis does basically takes different studies that are asking the same question and represent the conclusion from this study through an image of forest plot that conclude the data from these studies. So forest plot have two types. And the first type of forest plot is basically comparing difference data. So this is this is basically type 1 and it is comparing difference data. So difference data would be an example of that would be, for example, if we have the mean. Another example of difference data would be absolute risk reduction. Now, why is it called difference data? The reason why, it's because when we have mean in the study, or absolute risk reduction, where we do, we basically subtract the treatment from the control uh, to be able to have the results. So that's why it's called comparing difference data. And when, when it comes into forest plot, there are a couple of things that I want you to keep in mind. First of all, you're going to be seeing the names of the study. So over here where we have, we have different squares and then a diamond. And we have these letters over here. So these are just names that I came up with. In actual study, you'll see their actual names of these studies. So each square represents a study. And over here, study number one, for example, it's called AC. So this is study number one. Study number two, it's called CL. So this is number two. Study number three, it's called JP. So this is study number three. Study number four, it's called BL. And again, these are just names that I came up with just to make it easier for understanding this lecture. And study number five, it's called JM. So now we see these squares, right? What do these squares represent? So I just said each one of them represent a study. It's basically a point estimate of the result of the study. So that's what each of these square represent. And now you're asking, wait, why are, why are there different sizes? Well, because the smaller the square represent a smaller sample size and vice versa. The larger the square has larger sample size. So this study had more participant in comparison to all the other four studies. So now we understand what the square is. And now the other thing that I want you to understand is the line that is crossing in the middle of these squares. So what does that, that line represent? So this line basically is the confident interval. So I talked about confident interval in a different lecture and I will be including the link in the description below for you to go ahead and review it if you would like to review it prior to moving on to this lecture. So what the confident interval basically in first plot usually is 95%. And what this line represents, now we're looking, there are different length of lines, right? So each line represents the confident interval. And the longer the line, so like this line over here, is basically l way longer than this line over here, right? These are both confident intervals. Okay, so this is just going to refer to confident interval as CI. 
Confident interval, they're both 95%. So the longer the line, and this is again back from the confident interval lecture, the longer the line, this represent basically it's, it's not as precise in comparison to the smaller one. So imagine, okay, if you have a smaller line, what this represent is the confident interval over here. For example, imagine that you have four people in your team and when somebody asks you which of these four people in your team, it's going to be easier for you to predict one from the four because you have 25% prediction when you have that for these four people. In comparison to this, so this over here confident interval, this is basically because it's short, it's more precise. So we have four people like in there. This is just an example, by the way. And here, because this is a very long confident interval, basically, uh, this, let's say, start from 0, goes to 70, and here started from 0, goes to 4. So from the 4, you had 25% chance of predicting which of them is going to win the competition. Here, from 0 to 70, it's really going to be hard for you. So this is why it's less precise comparison to this, because it's really hard to predict which of these 1 to 70 people in, in the team are going to win the competition. It's really hard. It's not that easy in comparison to this smaller one. You only have four people, so it's easier. It's more precise, okay? So that's the difference between the confident interval. So the more, the lengthier the confident interval, the longer the confident interval means it's less precise in comparison to the smaller one. So now we understand the square and the line in between. So what does this middle line mean? So this line is basically, this is called, so this line, it's called the line of no effect. Okay, what does that mean? What does line of no effect mean? Well, since we're looking or comparing difference data, so basically what I just said earlier is that because we're comparing difference data, we have the control and the treatment. So for example, if I have the treatment over here, so what do we do if we're looking for a result? So let's say a result. When it comes into mean or absolute risk reduction, what we do, we do the treatment minus the control. Okay, so basically, if the answer, if the effect of treatment and the control is similar, so let's say the effect was, let's say, out of 20, out of 100 people, 20 were cured. And here with the controlled again, out of 100 people, 20 were cured. So 20 minus 20 is equal to zero, right? And this is why when it comes into comparing difference data, this is just an example, by the way. This is just an example. Um, just an example to understand the difference data. So that's why when it comes into difference data, we always have the line of no effect, zero. The reason why, just because over here, Treatment, if it's, if the treatment and control, they're the same thing, this means that there is no effect. And this line basically is the line of no effect. So how do we interpret a forest plot? If we have this forest plot in a study, if you're looking at meta-analysis and they included this kind of um, image in there, how can you interpret this? in terms of statistical significant. So what you want to look at is basically the confident interval. So here we have zero because we're comparing difference data. Whenever you see the confident interval, okay, this line in between, that is crossing the middle of the square, the estimate point result of the study, if it crosses zero, mean this study was not statistically significant. So here, looking at these one, two, three, four, five studies, we can exclude uh, study number one. And let's see, so study number one is not statistically significant. Two and three they are, four it's not. So one and four can be excluded just because they're crossing the line of no effect. And from this you can tell that these two studies, number one and number four, 
their result was not statistically significant. And here on the bottom we see favors treatment. If the treatment was really good, then the result will favor that. If not, then it's going to favor the control. And we see these did favor the control, these three did, did not, so they favored the treatment. And what the diamond says over here, this is basically the summary of all these studies. It pull all the study together and gives you the summary of the effect. This is basically what the diamond means. So now that we understand what comparing different data, let's look at ratio data, which is basically the second type of forest plot. So this is called comparing ratio data. So when it comes into comparing ratio data, the examples of this would be something like, so an example of ratio data would be like hazard ratio. Another example could be odds ratio. And I have included this lecture in the past and I will include their link in the description below as well. So we have odds ratio. And it's represented by OR. So hazard ratio or odd ratios, if the study is using these kind of calculation or these kind of statistic, then we're basically comparing ratio data. So now, why am I calling this ratio data? And how is it different actually from difference data? So what makes a difference is because we have ratio, so basically what we're comparing, we're comparing the ratio of the treatment. So let's take an example. So here would be like, um, if we're looking for a result, right? So it's going to be treatment over control. It's called ratio because we're dividing now. We're not subtracting. With the difference data, we, we were subtracting. Here we're dividing. So basically, if let's go back to the same example. If I have 100 people and 20 of them, um, 20 of them were in the treatment and 20 of them were in the control, then this crosses with this and the answer is 1. And that's exactly why, exactly why the line of no difference we use is 1 and we do not use 0 in this case. So that's what makes this different from difference data, is that we use 1. So whenever you're looking at forest plot, and you notice there is zero in the middle, no, it's comparing difference data. It's so easy and direct. But if they're including number one, then that means they're looking at ratio data. So again, the same thing going back to difference data, we have names of each study, AL. So this is study number one. And LC is study number two. ML is study number three. It's two, three, J-O is study number four. And again, the same thing, confident interval is the line in between and the square represent the point estimate of the result of the study and the bigger means the larger sample size. So we have one, two, three, and four studies in this case. So looking at these four studies, we can tell that same thing, just like difference data, if the study crosses number one, so here we have study number three and four, they both crosses one, which means they're not statistically significant. That's what this means. In study number two and number one, they are statistically significant and they are basically, this says over here, treatment benefit. They're on the side of this part because they're benefiting there is benefit from the treatment that is being used in these studies. So both of them are statistically significant, both of these studies, and these two they are not. And the diamonds again, this represent the pooled effect from all these four studies combined together. So this is it for this lecture. If you have any question or comment, please leave them in the comments below. And as always, thank you for watching.